We're all seeing each other. Recording is on. Hello and uh, welcome to the Monday, 23rd of August, um, 2021 DXL Business Call. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, so today we're going to be talking about, um, first of all, uh, Pocket Network. That's been kind of, I think, John and Moore started the discussion with them and uh, a few other guys have been in touch. Uh, it could be a few interesting avenues for collaboration. Um, in the call on Thursday, we discussed sort of like DeekStow as, you know, sort of like a governance as a service or, you know, like a deploying service and some sort of like legal arbitrage for, for projects. Um, Swapper launch, um, and I guess Arbitrum launch as well, uh, based on Arbitrum. Um, and then on the DX event, we have uh, ETH Lisbon, which uh, at the end of the hour, um, the sales are going to go on, uh, the tickets are going to go on sale. Um, and um, yeah, we for, have. For LISCON. For LISCON. Yes. Oh, yeah, sorry, for LISCON, not for ETH Lisbon. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Like, we can call it like Lisbon Blockchain Week, and then under that, you have like ETH Lisbon, LISCON, and that Daoist. Um, uh, so that's that. Um, and, and yeah, maybe we should start. One more thing we have is kind of like the East Global uh, event that we're considering sponsoring. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, I would like to start with, you know, just the uh, Lisbon Blockchain Week and the opportunities that we have there. And because these are like, um, so sort of like time sensitive and we need to decide, you know, as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, is Dave here? Dave and, um, yeah. And Melanie, yeah. Do you guys want to update like the things that you guys are on top of? Sure. So, well, the main thing I'm doing right now is just, uh, securing the accommodation. So uh, we kind of have a rough idea of attendees, um, and just finalizing that. However, uh, we are in Portugal, so things just take a bit longer here to get uh, replies to emails and stuff. But uh, the first accommodation is pretty much sorted for the, so to speak, the extra retreat. Uh, that's already reserved. I just still need to pay for it. And um, after that, we're going to be staying in Lisbon, where all where the blockchain Lisbon week starts as well, right? So I think we're opening with the Taoist, where there are a number of sponsorship opportunities um, I shared in Keybase. And I also had a chat with Felipe, who's organizing it. Um, uh, maybe that's something we could briefly chat about, about yeah. potentially our intentions of sponsoring that or not. And if we are thinking of doing an opening party, maybe the day before the Taoist, I know the Taoist also has a party in the end, like they did in Paris, but I thought maybe if we, if we have a high level sponsorship with the Taoist, maybe we could also do like an officially opening party, which could be quite cool. Uh, to kind of have them co-promote it as well, etc. But pretty much they have three levels of sponsorship, which I think is similar to Paris. The prices have increased a bit. So the highest one is 12K US dollars. And that's the one where they kind of also sit down with you and try to build something cool or, you know, some marketing stuff to actually have at the conference. While the others are really just your logo and stuff in, in the present, in the event. So the second tier is 6.5K and the latter tier is 2.5. So those are kind of like the three sponsorship options. Um, and yeah, I don't know how much um, budget we want to allocate for sponsoring events, etc. We also reached out to LizCon for sponsoring that. Uh, haven't heard back yet. They just have a form online you have to fill out, but I'm also in touch with them on Telegram. So hopefully there'll uh, be some news there soon and for if lisbon we also tried to sponsor but uh, we were told that uh, currently they are evaluating sponsorship options and will reach back to companies which they want to be sponsored by or something like this which i found is a bit weird but uh, it is how it is so those are kind of like the three main events announced for now and um, yeah i don't know what people think if you guys want to sponsor as many as possible or if we want to do something more targeted um, I'm really open to everything myself personally. Um, I personally believe that if attendance is not attached to sponsoring, we we shouldn't really do it because I was a bit 
you know, disappointed with uh, the Taoists in, in Paris. We, we could have attended it anyway. I, I know um, Sky did a great panel, but apart from that panel, if, if we don't do something like that this time, sponsoring will be just wasted money. We, we can attend anyway if, if we're not panelists. To be fair, I guess in uh, Paris, we had a lower tier as well. So the only thing we got from our sponsorship was a logo on the flyer. But I, that was pretty much part of the deal. And I, then I don't, you know, I guess there's also some marketing value and exposure. I'm no expert in marketing, but um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I will say, I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of liked the Daoist event. Um, and I was just like all focused about Daoist, lots of like, yeah, essentially DAO related things happening. So that was really cool. Um, and yeah, like, I think it's great exposure. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. And, and you know, at the end of the day, it's also supporting like, you know, the DAO ecosystem. So that's that. Um, but we need to figure out like more of what we're going to get. I like the idea of hosting an event at the beginning, I don't know. I, mean, I imagine that's a bunch of work for us to organize, but I think that could be a cool way to do it. And maybe even like more bang for the buck if, if we're actually hosting something. Yeah, totally. I'm also, I'm in touch with a couple of venues where an opening party could be done. Again, you know, this is Portugal, so things unfortunately move a bit slower here, but I am waiting for some quotes on some places to get an idea. And yeah, I also think it would be a great idea uh, the only thing is we'd have to promote it well as well, right? That's why I was just thinking if we, the DAO has quite a wide reach, right? Or I mean, we could also probably find other opportunities to promote it, but we just want to make sure people actually also come, right? I think a yeah. DAO yeah. party would get people. Like that would, I don't know. I think that's a good way of attracting people. We can probably spread the word and like then we're kind of seen as like, I don't know, establishing ourselves there and people kind of coming to us. Um, and like, if you go to these like events, like if you have like a party with like, you know, drink deals or even like, you know, free food or, or, or drinks, like it's, it's, it's easy to get like some people there as we, we just like do some outreach there. So I like the idea of having our own event too. Would the, that idea be for Monday or for like one of the evenings, like a, like a party party or more of like a day long? I mean, I think even the, Rave rave event from Ave in Paris was midweek, so if I'm not wrong, yeah. So I, uh, I think I think Monday would be fine, right? Because I would I would guess that's when most people come in, right? Yeah, that would. I mean, but doing like a rave on the first day, um, <laughs> I feel like that'd be that'd be oh, tough yeah, on, no, the, that, on the body. <laughs> doesn't have to be a rave, but it could be something from like 9 p.m. to 2 p.m. for for uh, two or 4 a.m. something like this. I don't know. The thing is, on the 19th, that is the Taoist after party. So people are probably going to that. And uh, yeah, I actually don't know if there are parties announced towards the end of the week. But yeah. So, so this is something to explore maybe with the Taoists and tell them we're considering to doing a, for doing a party on Monday. And we'd love to have you guys like echo that and sponsor that. And obviously, you know, we're sponsoring the Taoists and we would, uh, you know, we, we would also like, you know, sort of like co market and share each other stuff so my my experience was uh, at least on paris i signed up on a lot of these uh, parties and they overlapped with each other and i obviously just went to one of them instead of three right uh, even though they were like super interesting ones uh, i think the risk of us overlapping with something else is huge uh, we, maybe we should we should like to like to do something together with uh, other teams like the uniswap party at the in paris was with like five six different projects and they had almost nothing to do with each other but it was super awesome it was big it was good the music was good food was good and i think yeah like we don't we don't get that much being like the only name on the poster or whatever right it, we rather do it like with, with three four other projects or at least one more project yeah, I like the idea of that set. Um, and I then think you're, you're, you're talking to Kleros, no, Malay? And I think Kleros are, fairly, Kleros are, sorry, are fairly close to us. 
Yeah, um, I've been communicating with Claros to have um, actually a, a prediction market workshop. They want to like host an all day event, but that would be separately on Friday, the 22nd. Um, if anybody's kind of interested in doing that, um, I know I've been like working with Sky and communicating with them. Um, if that is of any interest to those who aren't participating in the hackathon, it'll just kind of be a way to um, bring more exposure to o Omen and then just overall to prediction markets. Um, if anybody's interested in that. And then I just did want to run through the dates with everybody again. So the DX retreat will be from October 10th to the 15th. And then the Dallas event will be on October 19th. LizCon will then start the day after October 20th to the 21st. And then ETH Lisbon, the hackathon will be from October 22nd to the 24th. Just so you guys have like a better idea of the dates of everything as we're kind of talking through them. Um, but yeah. And for a venue, if we actually do it with different um companies as well we might have a larger budget there's actually a bullfighting arena in the city center of lisbon and i feel like that could be a really bullish thing to do like they actually it's not that big so it's not actually that massive as you would imagine and they actually also do private events could, with drinks could, and stuff oh can we like rent that thing yeah i already inquired and about it, uh, that would be the, like the dxdao event oh that would be amazing yeah right for the day on Monday, you're thinking? Yeah, yeah potentially, yeah. yeah. You do like something from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. or something like this. Oh, like an evening thing. Okay, yeah. Or night nighttime. <laughs> in, in Portugal, people go Quite for literally dinner at 10, you know? So. It's a European evening. I like the idea of doing something with the Taoist as well. I do the, the 12 K does feel a little bit steep depending on like, I mean, we should definitely ask for something if we're going to be spending a lot. So we should look into that. Yeah. I, th I think uh, they're, they're saying that they're doing some fairly hands-on work with us for our marketing. And I don't know, maybe we can get like the exposed to involved with this and understand like what this could be. And if this makes sense, um, I mean, you could get some help in marketing now. Yeah, and maybe we find some other DAOs through them as well who are interested in helping out, covering the costs or something. And one thing that was quite, uh, while well, we're recording, one thing that was not optimal as well about the Rave event, I would say, is that there were drinks. For, I had two drinks and then drinks were sold out and you were not able to even able to get any drinks inside. Like it was just done, you know, that was a bit weird. Yeah, and the fact that it was in a in a basement, which was very very hot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the bull arena would be open air, so that and the weather's nice here, so that should be quite nice. Yeah, I feel like COVID considerations would also be like you know open air. Yeah, so P Portugal is actually also uh, removing restrictions already. So like. I believe it's one of the most vaccinated countries now in the world. So hopefully things should be looking very good by October. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay, so we have the Taoist, we have LizCon, uh, which we're also talking. Oh, I guess you said that you guys have replied. Um, so also like if, like you should, everyone should apply to speak at these events. Kind of like in Paris, um, yeah. Hopefully, like we will get to speak, and that's like great exposure for Deeks now. Um, trying to think what else. Like it looks like if Lisbon, we're not going to be able to sponsor, or I mean, if they want us, they'll they'll ask us. Oh right, you bring up a great point, Nylon. Who so far has signed up for a speaking um, spot at LizCon? Have you, Nylon? Um, Adam? Yeah, I have. Um, I, believe I might actually, I might actually volunteer to help them with like sorting out the speakers because, like, yeah, they're kind of like collapsing under the load of this thing. So, um, yeah. Has anybody else volunteered 
I mean, excuse me, signed up to speak. John, have you? I, I plan, I would like to apply to speak, but I have not yet. Um, and yeah, it would also be good to coordinate on topics if we have a few people applying. So guys, if you need help with uh, the slides and stuff like that, contact me or Keenan and we'll try to distribute that work. We have, uh, sorry, Andre Casa that can help us and we also have uh, we have a designer at, at Deekstow uh, that might help also. But we, we know that Entricasa helped uh, other teams on in ECC to do their slides and they were really good looking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really think that speaking at these events is, it's, it's really the most, um, like value that we can extract because people listen to you and then you, know, you can get conversations off of these things. Um, so please do apply and you know, I don't know if you need help with like what to say, how to, I don't know, how, how to make it sound like it's an enticing um, presentation, like, like let me know, I'll be happy to, I'll be happy to help. Um, yeah, and just as sort of like an FYI, I want to speak on, you know, kind of like continuing from my previous presentation on like more shitty stuff that are happening in governance today and then doubling down even more about governance 2.0 um, and how this could work. Uh, and not just for DXDAO, this is supposedly for other DAOs as well. Um, and yeah, kind of like an interesting thing, um, I've been talking to John from Sorair um, about this because he saw the presentation and was like interested to talk. So just about, about like, you know, the, you know, uh, um, reputation voting and token voting together. So, so do we do we need to gauge like a general sentiment on which events and like it, it just in general if DX DAO is wants to has the desire to spend money to be a part of a bunch of these events maybe it's not the top tier but like the Taoist, the middle tier or lizcon some tier in the middle and and just like maybe for a half a year like sponsor a bunch of different events and see how that grows recognition and awareness and things because my feeling is and also with like eth global you kind of have to if you're going to do these things it's better to do them on a regular basis like if we do some sponsorship of the Taoist every time they do an event, it's much better than if you just do one once and then you don't do it the next time and then you don't do it the next time. But so you don't have to do the, the, the top tier, but to always be a part of it, I think is um, helps with awareness. And I mean, it's kind of like big brands that spend money just to have that awareness. Um, and obviously we can have a call to action or a specific ask that's better, but um, I think it's good to like stay involved in the community and 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 lead and become like the leader in the space, basically. And I think Heath Global yeah. offered a package for this kind of thing too. And I think there's so there's a little bit of a like better deal you can get too by signing up like in advance. And I think they definitely like that's a good relationship to have with the organizers yeah. too. So I, I I think that's a great idea to to try to pursue some longer term. Like, yeah, like you said, maybe pick a six months or a year or whatever and then see how it goes. We can always assess after. Yeah. So ETH Global, the, the latest update is Cardic finally got back to me. They haven't, even though they know the dates for like the next thing, because they're in the middle of the current hackathon, like they're like, don't, they're not even like planning the next one. So he's still going to be sending me sponsorship information for like, the, yeah, the open ETH global on ETH online hack event. Um, all these things seem to be like they do them last minute, but that's because they're they just squeeze them together and they have a formula. So once I get that, I'll share it. But um, we can move rather quickly on it, I think. Yeah, I, I want to add maybe, I mean, this is kind of like from the ETH uh, CC. Uh, recap um, that you know we should have goals and we should have we should understand why are we spending money like what are we trying to achieve and then you know this is both like you know 
in the money that we're spending and what we want to achieve, and then also for you know the people who are going to be, going to be attending, um, what they want to achieve, like whether this is you know people joining the Deeks DAO or partnerships or you know the ventures opportunities. Um, like we should have like set goals um, for these things and maybe KPIs as well. Um, so and then we can like measure whether you know. I don't know if you think that a Taoist sponsorship of I don't know 10k would give us this much exposure, then you know we should try to measure it. Or you know if we look at the entire week um, and see how like how much money we spent and what are the goals we try to achieve, then you know if we actually manage to achieve those. Um, so it should be like that with most of the things that we're sponsoring or doing. A clear goal is, I think, totally makes sense. And I think just my thoughts on that would be the products, you know, advancing knowledge and understanding of the products that we have, you know, that's Omen and Swapper right now and eventually Aqua and, and maybe some other things. And then also understanding the approach that DXDAO has to governance and the values around decentralization and, you know, trying to be a self-sovereign collective, et cetera. Um, I think those are sort of the main themes, but there's a lot of other things that, are of interest to, like you said, DX ventures and stuff. Yeah. Uh, what about like Geronimo and Zet um, about talking about Omen and um, and Swapper? Like, I think this could be like an interesting talk. Um, you know, cross chain um, decks and you know prediction markets and I don't know, Geronimo, like what you think the future could look like or what are some of the challenges you guys faced? And when it comes to talks too, like you can have talks that are about the the space sort of, not necessarily just your product, right? Like you could apply to talk about prediction markets like at large or whatever. And then, you know, you talk about Omen within that. Yeah, and it have to help with like articulating this to sound interesting, right? Because you could say like, you know, the future of uh, prediction markets or, you know, liquidity based prediction markets and, you know, the challenges, whatever, um, to figure out how to make this interesting and make them want to, you know, invite you to speak. And then like, I wrote something and it wasn't really what I talked about. I talked like way more about the style governance 2.0 and that type of stuff. Um, so yeah. For Swapper, at least, I think uh, uh, it feels like uh, <laughs> we were late to the Swapper, uh, sorry, to the fork game. I know we were early, like plan with the plan, but we we're late. Uh, from the product side, I would say it would maybe be a little bit weird talking about uh, Swapper as it is. Um, I think the interesting parts are obviously the governance part, the guilds the routing, the multi-chain stuff. Um, so, but from my point of view, I don't, it depends on how it goes next week. <laughs> like if we actually fly and everything goes well with the swapper token, and yeah, I might I might have the courage to go up and, and, and talk about the, uh, yeah, some of this stuff. Zed, let's... I don't know. Let's schedule some time to speak this week. Like you actually, I think you should definitely do this. And you, you can apply with just, you know, all you need to write is like the title and the description. And then, you know, later on, you can change that to something else that you find interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so went a bit on a tangent, but I think like if Lisbon is going to be fairly big for these now. Um, do we want to talk about Swapper launch if we're already on topic? Yeah, we could. Uh, which part of the launch? So we have the token launch and we have the uh, Swapper Beta V4 launch and when Arbitrum actually on. Uh, unlocks Arbitrum one to to non whitelisted addresses. Uh, so we have a lot of things going on. We also have an airdrop. 
Uh, so maybe we could start off with like any questions, like anything that that you guys think of. No. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Zed. I think maybe relevant to like this group and this call would be, you know, one of the main key ideas of of Swapper Token and timing up with Arbitrum launch and the first open L2 and and all the marketing from different projects and from the Arbitrum team that will come along with that. The idea is to really take advantage of that and the airdrop and swapper farming that will go along with that to really like set swapper platform as like one of the best dexes that's on this uh on arbitrum and and has actual farming with a with a new token that people can get excited about and, and bring their capital to to swapper um like the whole point of all of that is to like and the airdrop, for example, is to get to expand the community of of like awareness around Swapper as a product, and then and then bring the capital as well. So, like you said in the call earlier, like the way that we capture these people into the community is probably through like them joining our channels and stuff too. So, I guess over the next few weeks, as this happens, really the the ideal thing to do would be really to for people to like pay a lot more attention to and, and welcoming like new community people into the dx ecosystem via this like swapper on ramp but but share like people they'll they're gonna come for the swapper token and for the airdrop but they're gonna stay for swapper the product dx dow's values DXDAO's ecosystem of products and ideally people join and start contributing as well right and so there's this like whole path but it all starts with like swapper token launch on on arbitrum and so yeah reaching out to the communities that um we are involving in that and then the cool thing is like as the epics of the farming happen as we as we see as we hear about incoming interest from different communities and maybe there's other projects and stuff too once their farming is live those like the farms can be tweaked on a regular basis every couple of weeks or whatever and so it's a great way to get new projects and new people from new communities involved into the into the ecosystem and and there's like a thing to um negotiate with basically um so keeping an eye out for any communities that that like where it would make sense for like a farm to be like or a, a swapper pool to like spin up around that that community's token is a great thing to keep in mind and everyone can kind of feed that into the ecosystem so yeah it's pretty exciting stuff yeah yeah thanks sky do we have yeah so I'll just chime in on on what Sky said. We don't, we like the the plan of the airdrop was actually as I don't know who who minted. The, they they had a word for the vampire airdrop or whatever we're calling it. It's basically just getting the attention of of communities and having them uh, move over liquidity to to Arbitrum. And then when they are there, we need to like. We need to do something with that, right? So we'll have farming incentives. We'll have a place where you can swap liquidity, uh, so swap uh, tokens. But also, people that actually will be interested in us will come through so uh, our, our social media, whatever we're calling it, like tele uh, Telegram, uh, Twitter, Discord. And then when when they come here, like we don't have uh, like a good plan of what happens when. 100 or 200 300 people comes comes to to discord the, the, i think it's up to everyone here to to try to to be helpful as possible coming days hopefully we'll have a lot of people coming in we want that but if we do <laughs> i don't think we'll uh, be ready for it right and we we need to try to capture it right a lot of people come into discord they mute the discord and never come back right they still have it in their discord so we, we need to be like good at capturing this attention. Uh, I think that's that will be crucial for the long term. 
and we have stuff planned up uh, both nft uh, like nfts it's not planned but we want to do something fun want to do po apps we want to do something for thursday friday uh, maybe an ama where we talk about let the community ask openly about the swapper token the arbitrum launch and and the farming so yeah that's uh, something to think of um, we we might like double our community just from this airdrop yeah this is sort of an all hands on deck thing right like you got to plan for success and be ready for what that success might look like and i think it's going to involve basically everybody paying attention and helping out uh, in different ways yeah i i, I was going to ask there seem to be like a launch plan, but th is there like a marketing plan attached to this? Like, yes. what do we... We yeah. do have, uh, me and Keenan are trying our best to to have a marketing plan surrounding this. Uh, we'll create content for each airdrop. We contact their, we'll contact each project, see if we can uh, collaborate with them, uh, see them if they can uh, push from their side. If they want to create their own content, they, they're welcome, but they're welcome to use our content to push on Twitter or Discord, uh, but our plan is to, we need to engage with them. It's impossible to these communities to know about our airdrops. We're not literally airdropping, they need to claim, right? Um, so they can't find the tokens in their wallets uh, uh, as of now. Yeah, it's a claim drop. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we do have like a, an airdrop plan where we contact the, the projects have our own cont content push push on on the from their side and from our side uh, that's the like uh, the short term plan yeah i'm wondering if there's like um can we like brand this as the first token issued on arbitrum we we talked about that too so we will have probably two two marketing pushes from our side where we talk about the uh maybe the first uh, farming incentives on Arbitrum, hopefully. We don't know. I don't think we'll be first because of our governance, but maybe we are. And the first airdrop will most probably be us. Uh, our token is already wh whitelisted on Arbitrum 1. Uh, looking at the token list, I don't see any new token. Uh, things can change, though, in the last second. But we, we, we have, like, we can push on different directions, but I think uh, yeah. We could pr uh, plan for those, but it's not 100% sure that we will be first. Also, because it's communicated not, we're first. The yeah. token has not been minted on Arbitrum. It, on it's not minted, no. We'll say I, would say, I would say potentially the, yeah, the first token distribution done on Arbitrum. Or on a layer two, period. Yeah. So the same, same kind of, like we, we do have an airdrop community uh, marketing plan will do the same with the farming incentive uh, because the farming will involve other um, other communities actually and much larger communities like Chainlink. So yeah, we'll we'll try to learn from what we are doing now with the with the with the airdrop and then try to do the same or do better with the with the farming. But the the plan with the farming is the same. Like cre create content contact the projects and see if we can do a, a, a co-push together and and yeah, see what happens. Yeah, also the base installment on Arbitrum is also like something to celebrate, right? Yeah. Yeah, first time we're using DX Vote uh, in production. Um, the first time we're launching a product token uh, and potentially the first to like token distribution on a generalized layer two on Ethereum. So yeah, I think there's a lot of cool like highlight talking points we can use. For the uh, these other communities that we want to engage, is there a way that we can all coordinate and leverage individuals' contacts and and kind of like, yeah, swarm that in a way? Like, what is the current plan? Is it like Sky? Are you going to manage like reaching out to them, or is that or yeah? 
Yeah, so we we are in touch with most of these. I don't know all of them, but um, once we yeah, I, what I was gonna do is like you, we talked about in the call earlier, create a few extra bullets of like why we why DX DAO decided to involve these communities, right? So that it's not just so there's like a few other like value points that they can share with their community of like why bankless community was involved was included in this in this claim drop um and that's what we share with them and then especially if we have like graphical content and like something that they can easily retweet or reshare which is mainly pointing to like the article about how people can actually do the claim right like that's probably the most important thing like very clear three here are the three steps to like go to arbitrum make sure you have some eth claim your swapper token um maybe we need like a very like i know some of that might be in like a bigger article but we should make another medium article that's like very specific to exactly how to do it and then that's what they would ideally be sharing um with their communities and so yeah i can I will work with Zet and and uh, Keenan to like make sure that what we share with them makes sense. And yeah, if there's other, if other people have specific contacts, I don't know, like Dex Guru and stuff, uh, or maybe Uniswap too, um, we can we should yeah contact one of the three of us, I guess. But I think it, I think I think it should be pretty easy to share this like. It's it's like a win win for everyone, both communities and everything. So, I don't think they're gonna have a problem sharing this with their community. Yeah. Also, besides like keeping track of like uh, the communities we are basically directly inviting via the airdrop, I think it's also crucial to look out um, which community or project is actually like going also kind of all in on Arbitrum, but has no like big player as a partner, right? Um, like uh, Uni or um, Sushi and similar to House on XDAI because we're actually like one of the few who are active on XDAI, like this partnership uh, happened. And I think we should like uh, look out for similar partnerships for like smaller communities who don't have like, uh, yeah, who are not able to, to talk to the big players that we actually like uh, partnering up with them on Arbitrum because they want their tokens to be on Arbitrum. If they don't provide incentives, Swapper might be in, in position to like attract the user base, right? Totally. Yeah, th that ties in with the, like the, str the overall strategy that that kind of we've had with Swapper for like what our Swapper farming is eventually going to be was, you know, we, we talked about this with Zed a lot, actually. That, like there are some benefits to being like the only farm for Aave token on, Arbit on Arbitrum because you, you do get this audience who has Aave token who all of a sudden discover Swapper. And like, if that's the only place you can get a reward, that's, there's actually a big benefit to drawing those people in. And that's those, some of those big tokens are included in, um, in our, in our campaign. However, like we're probably never going to be the biggest pool for Aave and Uniswap and, and like some of those tokens. Right. However, we, as DXDAO, we can, own and be the biggest pool for any of those projects that are smaller especially if they align with our interests and so uh, yeah we should team up with those with those projects and and as we discover who is in this arbitrum ecosystem and we, we you have the portal and you can see who's kind of on there and we have those on the list but at the end of the day we have to see who who wants to bring their audience to arbitrum and who's who, who's got their yeah, who's doing that? And then we can like dynamically bring them those projects into our like farming campaigns and things. So the other thing, yeah, the other thing that goes along with that point that Geronimo just made about, yeah, like engaging other communities that are trying to make it like make a name for themselves on Arbitrum is we got to remember the DIY farming, right? On Swapper, they can actually use Swapper to launch 
their own farming campaigns. And yeah, we so, remember to tell so, that. So yeah, I was going to say this. Go ahead. I was just like the same thing for that. And just thinking back to Matic, right? And like Polygon and what was really like everyone was doing is everyone was going there to farm and it was like cheaper. And it's just another huge opportunity for Swapper with the do it yourself farming. I think that is probably like the maybe like the step two. Maybe that's something that people will launch in like the two, three, four weeks after Arbitrum launch. But I think that's something we should be targeting for what, what projects want to launch liquidity mining campaigns on Arbitrum because there will probably be um, a lot more. Yeah, another interesting thing we could do is basically do something like a competition or basically announcing like the first three projects who are like creating a farming campaign on Swapper will be matched by with Swapper tokens for a specific amount with like the condition that the DXO at the end of the day decides what's going on, right? Like just to make sure that there's no like shitty project doing shitty things. But something like that, where we basically announced we will support uh, other communities if they are like actually committing to something like uh, their own farming yeah. campaign. There's a there's a tricky thing with Swapper with do it yourself farming though that ideally you would have the ability to add tokens into an ongoing farm. So if if like if we did a deal we could that you know there could be swapper rewards and then the project could come and put their own token into the same into the same campaign but swapper doesn't currently have that ability and it's it's actually quite important to be able to do that and it, it would work vice versa as well like if someone created a big farm with their own token dxdao would have the ability to like add swapper rewards to that farm the problem is anytime you want to team up like that you're going to be creating two different farms and then it like then you have then the like the stakers have the farmers have to choose which one to use yeah i mean i mean those campaigns have a duration right uh, one one thing we could do is basically commit to like once this once their own farming campaign is done uh the swapper community will do another one with same duration but uh, a clear amount of, of swapper tokens or something like that like basically attract uh smaller communities um with like uh, this competition or like the t first three projects will get a sky yeah let's talk you and i like sync on that issue because maybe we can find you know let, let's try to find the best way that we could approach that uh, given what we have for time and stuff yeah yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, maybe we should move on to the next topic. I think, like, to talk about Pocket Network, at least ten minutes. Um, so yeah, sorry, and yeah, we'll continue that conversation. Um, yeah, Nathan, do you want to maybe talk or John? I think like that intro came from you. Yeah, I could mention a few words, although it, it's best we do it after we have a meeting with them because at this point it's. It's nothing yet, you know, um, until we make something of it. And it it's depending on, it's contingent upon developments on both sides. They're working on something. They're saying it might happen by the end of the year. On our end, we're just testing the product at this point. Uh, we'll be pushing new code and, and with the next release, we'll have it on the app and if we see users choosing it over the existing RPCs we got, then we can even make it a, a default. Yeah, and I said, why can't we like already execute on it? Is it because uh, their token is not an ESC20 token? Yeah, but basically what, um, a, a brief introduction. Uh, Pocket Network is uh, uh, this, API for uh, Web3 dApps, and it, it's uh, basically a, a, a trustless uh, two-sided market between uh, node providers for uh, blockchains and, you know, uh, dApps that, you know, uh, query data from those chains. And um, both sides will be staking the token and participate in the network and, and will be incentivized. And, and they've 
kind of like created a new primitive in DeFi uh, called uh, data mining. They, they will wrap the token and allow uh, users of those dApps to buy and stake the token. Um, in this way, they will be contributing to the to, to their favorite dApps, giving them uh, this infrastructure for free. And for doing so, they will be um, incentivized with um, incentives for, for, for that stake. You know, um, it, it's a lucrative initiative because on one hand, you will be holding something that has tremendous value. And on the other hand, it appreciates. It, it is an inflationary, um, it's called inflationary tokenomics, but um, by the look of it, it it's, a, it's an amazing product. And if we could somehow partner with them, it would be amazing. For this, at this point, they, they've they developed their um, roadmap forward um, around uh, uh, the balances, liquidity bootstrapping pools, and, and then trying to figure out um, other stuff, and uh, it, it was great that Geronimo introduced it to to the BizDev team, and, and we're now figuring out. Um, we'll have to first convene with them and have a chat. We haven't done that yet, so it, it's too early to talk about it, um, and then figure out a way to to leverage uh, Aqua and Swapper for those initiatives. So we'll see what comes out of it. Yeah. So overall. Pocket is an alternative to the cent centralized Infura uh, service, which is basically used by the, the whole crypto Ethereum community. And um, uh, we, we have added it to Omen. It works very great so far. Um, right. And I think we don't have any alternatives, right? Like um, either we use Pocket uh, which is actually really trying to decentralize this uh, very important infrastructure uh, or Infura. And um, uh, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a no-brainer to um, basically already um, save us um, or save the DXDAO uh, a decent amount of pocket tokens, which are not tradable right now because they're kind of living on their own blockchain right now. So it's very, it's actually very difficult to, to buy into those tokens right now in a decent amount. Um, so having like a, a partnership with Pocket, even though the DSTAL can't hold those tokens yet, I think we could do something like uh, basically a partnership with like a, a promise for once those wrapped Pocket tokens are out, then they their DAO will need to send those tokens to the DSTAL and then the DSTAL can actually stake those token uh, those tokens and then we actually have uh, like the DXDAO itself will be uh, enabling uh, in like the decentralized and pure support for all our devs and and right now like we see uh, other teams doing doing those token swaps and I think uh, we will miss out of like a great deal if we don't pursue the like token swap now because once the, their token is tradable, I, I expect that the price will rise because um, they're like a market price will be found. Right now, it's like very uh, foundation defines the price of it. It's it's from my point of view, it's, it's cheap, but that's up up to the digs or to decide. Overall, uh, there's no alternative for us, so I think it's a no brainer in my view, uh, just to make sure that. Any dApp we are actually releasing has like pocket uh, RPC nodes integrated to make sure that uh, we're actually promoting decentralization and not doing the lazy way of just paying like an Infura account, which can be easily be closed and stuff like that. I think this is great. And it's like a no brainer to me. I think like if we want to truly decentralize, there are a lot of kind of weak points in stuff that we're doing. And this is like another great example of where we can increase decentralization in our stack. It's sort of like working with Radical on their decentralized version of GitHub. So like I would fully support aligning interests and you know working with them, like decentralizing how we do things and then also talking about that, right? Like we should be loud about these partnerships with like Radical and Pocket and you know what decentralized blogging and et cetera. 
Yeah, totally. Like we are already so far ahead compared to the rest of the whole uh, crypto community. Like no one is protecting the access of their dApps via like a, a bigger uh, decentralized DAO. Um, I mean, we're get, we're actually going like all in crazy on on it, right? Uh, code collaboration or radical uh, alternative to improve, maybe even replacement of Infura. We can make like on Omen. You can even uh, do it like we have it right now. If there's something happened with pockets, like the, the nodes are down, we can still like tell the user, hey, uh, pocket network is down, just switch to like Infura. So Infura should be the backup, right? We should actually like promote and actually not fear like fakey shit. Yeah, we care about decentralization, but we, we still use Infura, but actually like going all in and trying to maximize. Yeah, decentralized storage is another uh, thing that we could improve upon. IPFS is, uh, has yeah, incentive issues. Also, ListCon tickets go on sale in one minute. It's like Everyone refreshing their browser. Tickets. We're probably making a bigger deal than it, it probably is. But it doesn't hurt <laughs> yeah. to get the tickets early. <laughs> uh, I got mine already. Really? No. Oh, so the, he's probably like next door to the server in, in <laughs> Yeah, I'm with, I'm with the guy at the bar in Lisbon. You know. <laughs> send send the link to buy it because they're. Probably oh, just gonna add the link, right? Five PN. It didn't refresh yet. <laughs> yes, that went to their GitHub. <laughs> Can anyone share the link? There's no link yet. Uh, oh, I mean, oh, you mean to Lizcon? You know, these these are the type of moments we should probably like take snippets out and share them on Twitter. Like, look how serious the style can.